Hello, everyone. Hello, Marcel, France, and everyone in Agroscope. I'm quite sorry to have failed my presentation two times. Um, I was uh, yesterday or last night in a place affected by, by fire, so electricity was off and on all the time, so I couldn't access Wi-Fi. But anyway, I will uh, show you my presentation now, hopefully in 30 minutes. Um, well, so I introduce myself. I am Cesar Marin. Uh, I am just starting a, an associate professor position uh, here in Chile. Uh, previously, I did a postdoc also here in Chile for two years and a six month uh, postdoc in Prague. Uh, in the Czech Republic. So um, the title of this presentation is Networking to Counteract Global, South American and Chilean Gaps in Soil Biodiversity and Ecosystem Function Research. It's a bit uh, broad, the title, but you will see why. So first, as a, con as a general context, I can tell you what uh, led me to this kind of uh, networking. Uh, showing you my my research overall has been focused on soil fungal biodiversity, mainly mycorrhizal fungi, uh, also in ecosystem services and applications of soil biota, and then in the networks in the South American Mycorrhizal Research Network and the and in the Global Soil Biodiversity Observation Network. Then I did I have publications in in other areas, but. Uh, I will not talk about this uh, at the moment. Um, so, for example, one of the things that we do is to use um, morphospecies to, for example, to know how many species of uh, glomeromycota we have in Chile. And with this couple of publications, we um, at, at the moment have uh, 59 uh, species. So about 17 or 18 percent of the global biodiversity of morpho species, uh, and until that, until those publications, most of the research was in in agroecosystems, uh, but and very few studies in in forests. And I, I work mainly in forests, so we went to around 20 forests, collected uh, spores there, and found that about one third of the species of these 59 species are shared between agroecosystems and, and native forests, like, like native conifers, for example. So this was quite a nice uh, result. Then in another collaboration in Ecuador, we also use um, morpho species to, for example, check the effects of um, crop rotation. Uh, and you see in the graph that a place that was uh, a grassland uh, has uh, more biodiversity and more abundance of spores of uh, glomeromycota compared to a place that was uh, on altar for seven years and then it had like, like several iterations of different crops and the final crop was uh, mice in one case and potatoes. Uh, the diversity is, is lower. Mm, then I have been also using some metabarcoding techniques in a very simple study in uh, Puyehue National Park. We found that um, um, the, the forest, the plots that are less intervened uh, with trees, uh, 500 year old trees, they have more saprotrops and more ectomycorrhizal fungi compared to the places with, with more disturbances. For example, a, a plot or plots that were, that had some kind of uh, forest management and a plot that was completely good. Uh, and regarding the applications, uh, one of my strongest collaborations is with uh, Paula Aguilera from La Frontera University here in Chile. She started to work uh, around her PhD thesis with the effects of uh, high aluminum saturation and low phosphorus uh, availability uh, in regards to, to different uh, species of arbuscular mycorrhizal fungi. 
And in Southern Chile specifically, the context is that the soil is quite acid, uh, very high aluminum saturation. So um, this part of my collaboration combines like this scientific knowledge also with uh, a company uh, founded by, by Paula Miconativa, which is the first uh, company using a glomeromicota biofertilizers here in Chile, na native inoculum. Um, and we use usually five or six species, a consortium of, of different species. We still don't know exactly if all the species are having different like functions uh, in regards to plant growth, for example, but uh, definitely native consortia has worked better than, than non-native consortia or than non-native uh, singular uh, inocular species. And we are starting a project of this because um, before it was mainly in cereals, but now we are trying to apply this in the viticulture, in, 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 in the wine sector, because it's quite strong here in Chile. Um, so we want to combine um, inocula from here, from central Chile, where I am now, with the southern part of Chile, because of climate change, the, the vineyards are getting more into the south, like at the beginning of Patagonia even, uh, or the northern limit of Patagonia. <clears throat> so we want to combine this uh, to inocula to see what happens in the, in the, in the wine production. My PhD thesis was about this topic, biogenic weathering by fungi. Uh, this has been a strong study so more than 20 years ago. And basically what I did was to put these uh, minerals, uh, mineral pellets, uh, 52 of these bags around uh, 13 plots in different national parks in Southern Chile and collect, collect them back one year later and two years later. Uh, the bags contained um, muscovite and biotite, uh, which are uh, which have uh, these uh, cations that you see there, um, and then an analyze this in the in the microscope, mainly in XPS microscope, and also uh, nanosims uh, microscope near uh, Munich. Uh, for many, many months, many many photos were taken, and basically the colonization by the IV of of a photo is like a proxy of the degree of biogenic weathering. So how much the photo is colonized is like um, yeah, an approximation of the, this process, especially when you see like this kind of channels in the photo that the IFE uh, leaves. Uh, it was a lot of work, many uh, research stays in, in Europe and many long times of work in the microscope. Uh, finding back the bugs um, and basically I also did the metabarcoin analysis on these, on these same plots in the, in the soil, the bulk soil, and we found a negative relationship between saprotrops and ectomycorrhizal fungi, but I have uh, showed this slide <coughs> in several conferences and, and um, the people always say that this is an artifact and, and I, I think that it's in like a statistical artifact. Uh, this uh, negative relationship between, between saprotrophs and, and ectomycorrhizae, but and still I find it interesting. <coughs> I think that uh, several people in, in Sweden uh, works uh, strongly in this topic in the, in the like in the, in the possible niche overlap between these two guilds. And anyway, we propose another project to found if this relationship is true or not, uh, but where all the plots are close to each other, 96 plots. And there is this like gradient from Notophagus, which is an ectomycorrhizal plant, to Araucaria araucana, which is an arbuscular mycorrhizal plant. In, in the in 300 meters and no difference in altitude. So this gradient allows to, to check if this relationship is true uh, because the soil is the same. There is no distance between the sites uh, or is very little distance. Uh, the weather, of course, is the same. So we reduce all, all those other uh, like, factors. And the other 
interesting result on this part of the on, on the thesis on the PhD thesis was an inverse relationship between uh, the soil potassium and the degree of biogenic weathering. Both my both minerals, uh, biotat and muscovite, if you remember, they contain um, this nutrient. So it makes sense. It makes a total it makes total sense. We also did a similar experiment, a similar approach in New Caledonia, because uh, because New Caledonia has a very similar flora, the same genus uh, than Chile, different species, but the same genus, the same Araucarias and Notophagus. <clears throat> and we found this negative relationship, which I think that is it makes sense. Um, if this nutrient is already available in the in the soil. Uh, there is no need to colonize uh, these minerals. The process of biogenic weathering can be passive and can be active. Sometimes in, it can be, it can cause energy uh, to the ivy and to the fungi. So it makes sense. Um, and finally, or, or the main issue of this talk is the South American Mycorrhizal Research Network. Um, this network is associated to several other uh, networks like the Global Soil Biodiversity Initiative, uh, the soil, soil Bond. Also, we collaborate with uh, Marcel and the International Mycorrhizal Society. And we have been involved in several global projects like FUNLIF and Global Soil Microbiome from Lejo Tederzo and the Global Initiative of Crow Microbiome uh, from Brajesh uh, Singh in Australia. Um, in 2019, we published the first uh, book and a spring hair book on mycorrhizal fungi in South America with 17 chapters, I think, uh, <clears throat> with several contrib contributions from almost every country in South America. Uh, quite interesting book. And um, uh, we have at the moment 272 members from 39 countries. So it's a very active network. Um, why specifically South America? And we think that our conditions are quite different. Also, is a thing where we are close, relatively close, and we know from, for example, I know the people from Bariloche and the people from Southern Brazil and the people from Bogota and the people from the Amazonian uh, in Peru. So there is a lot of contact basically, but also we, for example, don't have like multilateral funding. And, and of course, to make continental ecologies, you need multilater multilateral funding is not enough, <clears throat> like with a national project. Uh, we have some def deficit, uh, some problems, uh, especially with the students, um, where there is no enough training in, in molecular methods, in bioinformatics, in, in the statistical analysis. Uh, and also the main pro problem, I think, is that Many uh, countries and many biomes don't have like even a single study on mycorrhizal fungal diversity. Um, and if you see, I, I, I check the fungal traits uh, database, uh, which came last year or in 2020. Um, and here are the proportions of uh, arbuscular mycorrhiza, nectomycorrhiza species hypothesis in that database. And South America is very, very uh, lightly represented. Uh, but we know that we have way more diversity. For example, the diversity of uh, ectomycorrhizae in Notophagus is huge. So this uh, graph doesn't represent reality. It's just the avail by availability in that particular database, but uh, way, no, way more needs to be done. Um, here in this chapter with uh, Guille Bueno from Estonia, we compare the mycorrhizal research uh, with a very uh, narrow search in web of science uh, on mycorrhizal fungi between South America and Europe. And you see there that, that in South America, we have almost a third of the number of students studies than in Europe. And also the thing that we study are mainly community structure, meaning, meaning mainly biodiversity while in Europe is mostly anthropogenic effects on, on, fun on mycorrhizal fungi. Uh, so the focus are quite different. Um, in the book that I mentioned, chapter three and chapter fo uh, four, they, they are about the biodiversity of ectomycorrhiza, for example, 
they compare uh, the group of Eduardo Noura and Matt Smith, they compare um, molecular methods and morphological methods, and they found like similar dominant lineages. And as I said before, the Patagonian Notofagaceae has uh, a super high um, richness of, of ectomycorrhizae, which by the way, this coincides with a paper that uh, Lejo is writing right now uh, on the endemicity of, um, of global fungi. And it, it is the same result uh, for ectomycorrhizae in, in New Zealand and, and these uh, Notofagus forests are the places with more endemicity. Uh, and then the biodiversity of arbuscular mycorrhizal fungi, uh, 186 morphospecies. And if you see the map, all these are the sampling sites and Amazonia, for example, has just like a couple of, of places uh, which have been sampled, the Cerrado in Brazil as well, a uh, big part of the uh, Patagonian steep uh, so, as said before, and, and for example, in the Guyanas, uh, there is not a single study, I think. Uh, so there is a lot, a, a lot of to, to be done in, in, this, in this group. Uh, we organize, uh, uh, the moment to, we have organized two symposia. The first one was in Valdivia, in the city that I did my PhD uh, in 2017, with uh, eight countries and 75 participants, and the second was a magnificent symposium in, in Bariloche by the colleagues there uh, with uh, 16 countries and 100 participants and the guests were people like uh, Mar Andres Elose, like Marja Opic, like Miroslav Bosatka, uh, like um, uh, Kabir Peay from Stanford. So it was quite a high level symposium and we are quite happy with this. We are already doing our third symposium in the Amazon in 2023. I hope that uh, the COVID conditions are better by, by 2023. I think that Marcel is one of the keynote speakers, if I remember correctly, but the, the, there are quite also a good, um, good amount of, of, of keynote speakers from everywhere. And this city, uh, Leticia, is in the limit uh, between Colombia and Brazil, and it's a wonderful place, a, a wonderful place to be. Um, we just successfully did also an online um, workshop, uh, building a database of mycorrhizal trace for, for South America. This is the leaders on, on these are Jessica Duchisela from Ecuador, Patricia Silva Flores, and Maria Isabel Mujica from Chile and Guillermo Bueno from Tartu. Uh, also quite nice speakers, uh, Bala and uh, Jason and, and Jim Bieber. Um, we have as well a video blog in YouTube. We try to interview uh, one person a month, each month, uh, about recent papers that they have specifically on, on mycorrhizal fungi, of course, and you see there the type of guests that we have had, like Francis Martin and Lejo and Kavir and many, many people, Diana Wall as well. Um, and this is with the help of Guille Bueno and Camille Trong. We emphasize a lot the need to do my, uh, science outreach. We think that it's super important to do this and we, uh, the, the leader of, of this paper was Patricia Silva Flores on uh, Plants People Planet, uh, on like a toolkit on how to do outreach specifically for mycorrhizal fungi. And in the link there, in South Mycorrhizal uh, uh, Outreach, there is uh, plenty, plenty of, uh, yeah, of resources to do outreach specifically in, in mycorrhizal fungi. So I think that this is quite important to fight the, sometimes the personal and, and institutional barriers to, to do our risk because it's quite important. And regarding the soil bond, the Global Soil Biodiversity Observation Network, um, the, main, um, the main person in this is Carlos Guerra, is his initiative, and he invited to several people from all around the world to join, like in 2018, I think we started to, to build soil bond 
Let's see, yeah, in 2018. And then we did like a, this meta-analysis in nature communications uh, showing that uh, from all the continental and global scale studies in soil ecology, um, these are the main groups studies like uh, like studies like formicoidea and uh, oligacoeta and bacteria and soil respiration is the main uh, like ecosystem function but the main result from this which is not a good result from this meta-analysis is that just in 0.3 uh, percent percent of, of those global and continental scale studies both biodiversity and function uh, and functions and ecosystem functions are studied at the same time. So people who, who is studying uh, functions and nutrient cycling, for example, is almost never paying attention to, to soil biodiversity and, and the same in the, in, in, and vice versa. Uh, so this is something that we need to work strongly. And then in the science paper from last year, <clears throat> We propose how to combine these two things, biodiversity and functions. And in the supplemental material, there is like a, the techniques and the methods that we recommend to study all these things, like litter decomposition, soil respiration, um, traits of roots, uh, taxonomic diversity, etc. And these are the, here are, we, here are the, the, the People at Soil Bond, the, the ones that we started, uh, it's a kind of uh, a nice group to be. It's a very nice group to be, and several of them will perform the analysis in their own laboratories, like uh, Fernando and Nico and Diana and Lejo and Thomas. Um, so the main idea of Soil Bond is to collect. 1,000 samples of soil all around the world in 500 sites. So one site is under a national park, on, 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 under an area of conservation, and the other site is not, and they should be close by, relatively close by. Um, and the same sampling uh, point with the coordinates will be sampled every three years. Until now we have funding for the first six years, but the idea of Carlos is to do this for a total of 12 years, to see how really how biodiversity, soil biodiversity is changing in those, in those 12 years. And I have coordinated many of the people here in South America in places like Chile and Argentina and Colombia and Ecuador. Um, so we, uh, we will start this year, hopefully, uh, in, in a few months to, to sample, to do the first sampling. Uh, inspired by this, my uh, bachelor student, uh, my bachelor student in, uh, did a thesis, uh, her thesis on this topic. Uh, and also we are writing a chapter. So we separate the different mycorrhizal types, for example, and uh, the different functions performed by, by mycorrhizae according to the a paper by Camille de la Book. Um, and you see there that, that, again, there is a lot of concentrations, for example, in the southern, in southern Brazil, where several of my colleagues are, and in southern Chile, also a lot of students in the, in the, in the city that I did my PhD and, the, and, and, and in cities close by. So it's very related to where the main research uh, institutions are located. And also the main group studied is, uh, or the main um, type of mycorrhizae is arbuscular mycorrhizal fungi uh, with almost 1,000 uh, sampling sites. While the main uh, function is grow, plant grow, basically. A little bit of, or, or a significant amount of studies in soil aggregation, but then the other studies are, the other functions are way less studied, like uh, nutrient uptake, uh, nitrogen uptake, and chemical defense and the others, water contact, and this is, this is resistance. But a nice thing compared with the uh, Carlos Guerra study is that in about 24.21% uh, of the studies, both these functions and biodiversity had uh, studied at the same time. So that's, that's a nice thing. Well, here is just the disgregation by different uh, 
mycorrhizal types. You see that, for example, very few studies on orchid mycorrhizis on, in, in, and way less in ericoids. Uh, again, the functions most related to growth, to soil aggregation, and also a, a nice increasing trend uh, of uh, publications. Then we separate it by biome, by, by major biomes. Um, and as said before, Amazonia, very little studies. Uh, so hopefully that uh, symposium there will help to solve this a little bit. Then Javier also did this for her, this analysis, but for Chile um, to detect these blind spots uh, on soil biodiversity, specifically in Chile. So you see again, even with the same colors, the biodiversity here, um, some concentrated in some of, or, or some of the regions of Chile, like Aysén and, and Magallanes uh, and Tierra del Fuego, a few studies, and the studies are concentrated, for example, in the Atacama Desert, which is uh, a very nice place to, to do research, and many international researchers work there. Then in, in Santiago, and then in, in my region, in, in Valdivia. Uh, with the functions, more or less the same. Also a good percentage of, of uh, joint studies on functions and biodiversity, 18.10%. And the main groups are, the main taxa are bacteria and fungi, and then uh, nutrient cycling is the main uh, function. Uh, here, more or less the same. Uh, some taxa like acari, colembola, nematoda, formicoidea, protista, and rotifera, very, very few studies uh, in just a couple of regions of, of the 14 regions of, of Chile. So this needs way more work, work these, these groups. Um, and also some uh, types of ecosystems like the Magallanic subpolar forest, the Patagonian steep, and the Southern Andean steep, very little numbers of, of sampling sites. Uh, and overall, there, there are very like um, sampling hotspots like in Atacama and in the Chilean Matorral, um, which have a good concentration of studies, but the rest of the country, not, not, not so much. Finally, well, this, I, I show this, um, <laughs> in this piece that we wrote with Marcel for the IMS uh, newsletter. And in that piece, we say that the main um, answers, the main questions, sorry, in mycorrhizal ecology, or some of the main questions, not the main, but some of the main, uh, would be in which ecosystems mycorrhizas are most important and which ecosystem functions are provided by the different mycorrhizal types. Then is the relationship between soil biodiversity and ecosystem functions different in vegetation types uh, dominated by ecto and orchid and the different mycorrhizal types? and how to relate different mycorrhizal traits, like type status, functional re uh, gene reservoir, and um, flexibility with different ecosystem functions, and how do mycorrhizas interact uh, with other soil organisms like bacteria, nematodes, and small invertebrates, and how this interaction influence ecosystem functions and multifunctionality. So I think that these questions are very important. I hope also to answer them or part, uh, partially answer them here in South America. It has been my main focus. And then I have a bunch of projects or ending some, starting others, uh, Chilean projects mainly. This uh, fund is regular, like the most competitive. Uh, this uh, wine project, this relationship between mycorrhizal type and soil fungal assemblage. Uh, then um, altitudinal and precipitation gradients and the uh, job that I am just starting now uh, in, in here in Chile as well. And thank you, that will be my presentation. Again, sorry for failing today, uh, again, <laughs> a second time. And if you have uh, questions, please write to me.